Cool. Over the next 12 months, I'm going to take you through the life cycle of the Sauromatum venosum. So this is a big one here. This is uh, Rupert, named by my good friend Frank. Um, and Rupert is a huge, monstrous tuber of a Sauromatum venosum. So let's dive into the video and I'll take you through what I intend to do over the next 12 months with this big boy. So say hello to Rupert then. So Rupert is a Sauromatum venosum tuber. So the Sauromatum venosum, um, covered this many times on the channel, but the Sauromatum venosum is in the Araceae family. So it's an aroid and it's what we call a hardy aroid. So it's okay to go in the garden here in the UK. And the Sauromatum venosum is probably one of the hardiest. So I have these in my garden all the time, all winter. They don't, they don't all come in. I normally split them 50-50, so I leave half out and then bring some of the bigger ones that I'm a bit more precious about, like Rupert here, and I bring them in for the winter. And then I just dry store them like this, mostly in boxes, so in my wooden um, storage boxes. And then occasionally some of them of this sort of size I bring them out like this so that I can see them um, growing w without them um, being um, put in the, the storage. So over the course of the year, what I'm going to do is regular updates of Rupert. Um, you can see he's got a little baby, so he's got one little offset left. These little holes here with the yellow powder are where other offsets have dropped off. Um, so I've got lots of his children or her children. I have no idea on sex of these things. Um, and then the yellow powder is a sulfur, so it's yellow sulfur. And I always drop yellow sulfur on these to dry them out and stop the, 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 the fungus getting at them or stop them rotting over the storage period. So let's just talk a little bit about what we're going to see. So the cycle is something along the lines of this. So what will happen is R Rupert's an adult. So R Rupert has got more than three years under his belt. So the first thing that happens after this, the, the dormancy is this. And what you can see here is the flower spike coming up. So the flower spike is the first thing that will, will come up and it will come up over the, the, the winter and it will, it will take quite a while, I would imagine, probably in the region of a couple of months. But this little spike will turn out to be an inflorescence. And what an inflorescence is, I'll show you on the screen now, it's a large flower spike that contains the spathe and the spadix, one of the defining characteristics of the Araceae family. And then that will grow to, to like a complete full spathe and spadix assembly. And then there you have the spathe is what wraps around. So that's a bract or a modified leaf. And that wraps around the spadix, which is the thing that holds the flowers. So over the year, I'm going to show you that and, and how and how that um, uh, comes out. I'll show. I'm obviously showing you on the screen now what they look like, but we'll see them form on Rupert as it as he gets older. Now the thing is, you don't need to plant these. Um, they're, they're, they're called voodoo lilies sometimes, and I know a few plants have that name. But basically, you can grow them on a windowsill like this. So what we'll do is we'll take measurements of Rupert and we'll grow him out. We'll have a look at how his spike goes see how far we can get him before we have to plant him. Now the flower will come up or the inflorescence will come up and we won't need to necessarily um, uh, plant him until roots start to form here. And remember, because it's a tuber, the roots normally come from the top around this part, which is actually the stem area here. A tuber is, if you remember, is a part of a stem, not a root. So there's no roots at the bottom. There's usually the old tuber at the bottom. Um, and what we'll do is we'll have a look at the full life cycle and I'll explain that life cycle as he as he develops. So at the moment, we, I've just described him growing out his flower spike. Then that will, if it's lucky, get pollinated. And if it gets pollinated, then it creates a seed head. Now, whether it gets pollinated or not depends on whether we've got another one at the right time and I'll discuss all of that through the year as, as we, you know, as, as we get to that point. Then that will die back. So that flower, that inflorescence will die back. And then we start to get the amazing Sauromatum venosum leaves. So what, what come up then are, are you know, one, possibly two um, petioles, which is the thing that holds up the leaves. 
and then we get the, the, the leaves. And actually, it's not leaves, it's leaf. So each petiole, pet, petty, each petiole has one leaf, which has got one single margin, just like these, which are amorphophallus. This is all one leaf around here. Um, and the ceramatum is the same. Now, at the same time, if we've been lucky and it's been fertilised, then the inflorescence will actually, even though it's died back, it will give us a seed head. And that seed head is where we would get eventually a, a ripe, complete infructescence, or, or, or that, and that's the name for that. Um, and then that will lead us to having um, seeds if he's been fertilised at that point, or she's been fertilised. So from then, those leaves will go fully adult, and they'll go, you know, up, up to sort of like a metre tall, um, and, and with these large leaves around a, a, a rachis, um, that, that, that should, it's the defining characteristic of the leaf of the saromatum. So I'm going to try and show you that on Rupert as he develops. So I'll try and give you one update a month, maybe one every two months, depending on how slow it goes. But it'll be quite exciting to see it from this stage. Uh, and now we'll just take some measurements. So I've just weighed him. So he's 561 grams right now. So the dry weight, as he stands today, 561. And then across the um, the full width of his, let's just put him, in fact, let's put him back in the tub here and I'll give you his measurements because the measurements shouldn't change in the early stages. So it is difficult to measure, but it's about 12 centimeters, so 120 centimeters that way. And his flower spike today, from the tuber to the end of the flower spike is 11 centimeters, so 110 millimeters. Um, and they're the two dimensions and, and along with the weight that I'll keep repeating. So I don't think we really need to add much more. What we could do is we could take a, a rough measurement here, which is um, from the bottom of the flower spike to the bottom of the tuber is nine. So that gives us all of our dimensions now, um, and we'll measure those every time. Probably in the first couple of months, all we'll see is a change in this dimension. I can't see us getting much of a change here. And what we also might see at some point is this baby that's retained, this might start to come alive as well. Um, but there's always a chance that this comes off. So make sure you subscribe, hit, you know, hit the notification bell so you can uh, follow along as Rupert develops. And I will keep you fully informed with Rupert's um, development along the way. Hopefully we can get him up to a nice adult stage with his inflorescence and a nice adult stage with his foliage. I hope you're liking these videos. And if you are, please give us a thumbs up. It's the best way to support the channel and the best way to help YouTube put us in front of other people who like this kind of thing. And if you like us enough to give us a thumbs up and you're liking Rupert, then why not give us a subscribe as well and we can let you know when, one, how Rupert's doing and two, how new, well, when new content is made available. So if you hit subscribe and hit the all notification, we'll let you know when we've got our next content. Have a great week, everyone.